All in favor say aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. The Mississippi Institutions of Higher Learning Board has unanimously voted to remove donor Ed Meek's name from the School of Journalism and New Media. This is the result of a month-long controversy stemming from a now-deleted Facebook post by the former namesake after backlash from alleged racial undertones. Good evening and thank you for tuning in to Newswatch Ole Miss. I'm Sarah Kate Caliguire. And I'm Avery Sadler. The final committee has approved Ed Meeks' request to remove his name from the School of Journalism. Newswatch reporter Grayson Ashmore attended the IHL's board meeting today and joins us live in studio. Grayson? Thanks, guys. The IHL approved the request this morning in Jackson. Ole Miss Chancellor Jeffrey Vitter, Associated Student Body President Elon Miller, and Miss University Blair Wardsmith were also present. The request was listed under the consent agenda, and each portion was approved within the first minutes of the meeting, with no opposition. ASB President Elon Miller says he's pleased with the university's fast action in handling this situation. I'm proud of them for following through and approving um, the, uh, the request. Miss University Blair Wartsmith says she is especially satisfied with how Ole Miss listened to his students and took action quickly. She hopes the university will continue to act in this manner when dealing with difficult situations in the future. So I hope that we take this decision and continue to have inclusive conversation amongst student body groups to really make progress from this and to learn from the mistakes that were made and how we can be a more diverse and inclusive campus. As for Ed Meek, the removal of his name after his influence on campus and to the School of Journalism is not unanimously supported. There are still people standing behind him, agreeing that a single post should not have been this detrimental to his Ole Miss legacy. Ward Smith comments on the impact of social media. We are all growing together and learning how big of an impact our digital footprint can make, and so I don't think he could have ever imagined what kind of impact that one post was going to make. There are still unanswered questions, even though this was the final committee approval needed, one specifically being what the new name of the School of Journalism will be. And there is currently no answer. Thanks, Grayson. Here's a recap of how we got to this point. The original post had racial overtones, according to Chancellor Vitter. The faculty and students then responded with meetings in an open forum discussing the incident. Meek then requested his name be removed, and this was approved by each committee, including the last at the IHL board today. After the IHL board came to a unanimous decision, Newswatch reporter Amanda Haley takes us to the Meek School of Journalism to hear the students' and faculty's reactions. The Meek School released a statement thanking the university and the IHL for their support. The statement went on to say, we also thank Dr. Meek for helping us in moving forward and in focusing on the education of our students, which is our first priority. We invite Dr. Meek to be part of our conversation about restoration, reconciliation, and the reaffirmation of our values. Mark Dolan, an associate professor of journalism, appreciates the efforts that have been made. Well, I'm gratified to see that IHL supported the faculty and the other voting processes that the university had in place that wanted to have uh, the voted in favor of the name change. After talking to 10 Ole Miss students, most supported the decision. A few were neutral, but one was opposed to it. That student did not want to be on camera, but told Newswatch there were other more important issues to address on campus. Graduate student Madeline Johnson feels that a name change was necessary. I did uh, meet some people who thought that they were a little overreacting because Ed Meek did donate a lot of money to the school. They felt like his name should still be here because he donated money. But in my opinion, I feel like it should be changed. At least one school leader hopes any new name will reflect the school's core values. Amanda Haley, Newswatch, Ole Miss. Today's decision from the Mississippi Institutions of Higher Learning Board of Trustees put them in the spotlight. But most of the time, they do their jobs with little attention from the public. Newswatch reporter Sarah Doan explains the role of the IHL in Mississippi higher education. Journalism professor Charlie Mitchell has been teaching at Ole Miss for nearly 10 years. He says the governor appoints IHL board trustees, and they don't always deal with controversial matters, but they sometimes have to. They have a lot of power uh, over the universities. Mainly, they confine themselves to financial matters, 
uh, and uh, they let the universities be fairly autonomous. The IHL board met today in Jackson where they dealt with issues affecting all eight of the state's public universities. Because the meet name change was what's called a consent agenda item, they didn't discuss it before voting. And the consent agenda is uh, pretty much what it says, unless there's some objection. If it's a university, something a university requests, they approve it. Integrated marketing communications major Jessica Ship says she understands why the decision had to go through the IHL. There's a protocol, there's rules for a reason, so I understand, you know, it has to, you know, they have to take into effect how this is going to affect the university as a whole. With the voting taking place just a few hours ago, the school is not yet talking about a new name. Sarah Doan, Newswatch, Ole Miss. There are several questions our reporters ask that don't have answers. First, when will the Meek name come down from the building and the school? Second, will the School of Journalism and New Media be named for another journalist? And third, will Meek's initial donation to establish the school be returned? We'll continue to follow this story. A former South Haven alderman, Ronald W. Hale, was sentenced to seven years in federal prison for child pornography on Wednesday. Hale had the war, held the ward to alderman seat for one term in 2013. He later won the seat again in 2016 after Shirley Kite Hale pleaded guilty to transporting child pornography in April. He was ordered to serve five years of supervised release and pay a 3500 restitution fee to the victim of the crime in addition to seven years in prison. U.S. Attorney William Lamar said there is a common miscon misconception that child pornography is a victimless crime. He later added he intends to continue to protect those children victimized through child pornography. The Lafayette County Fire Department is working to ensure that every home in Oxford has a fire alarm. The fire department is partnering with First Alert, Campus Firewatch, and the Michael H. Minger Foundation to install 100 fire alarms on Saturday all over Lafayette County. The Ole Miss Honors College is also involved as they are installing the alarms as part of Town Gown Fire Safety Community Service Project. The only requirement to receiving an alarm is showing need for one. If you are interested in signing up for this program, you can contact the Lafayette County Central Fire Station. New research found that a majority of parents believe their kids can contract the flu just by getting the shot. But as Newswatch reporter Jack Orloff found an Ole Miss expert to bust that myth. Get your flu shot! Today, pharmacy students are taking part in Operation Immunization that gives flu shots around campus to raise awareness and help prevent an outbreak of the virus this season. Freshman Yvonne Perez gets her flu shot, but like many parents in the study, she's confused of the risks. I don't, like, I've gotten my flu shot and I haven't gotten sick, but I know people who've gotten theirs and have. So, like, it, it just kind of depends. Pharmacy student Austin McCorrick explains why some people feel the symptoms of getting sick even when they are not. So, the way the flu shot works is we give an inactivated form of the actual flu, and so it gives you, uh, they take out some of the proteins that are going to be the most likely to cause a small immune reaction in your body. So, you might have some, like, cold-like symptoms or anything like that, but you're not actually getting the flu. Although people have different opinions, getting the flu shot is the best way to prevent getting sick. I'm Jack Orloff, Newswatch Ole Miss. Ow. There you go. Operation Immunization will continue giving shots on October 22nd at the pharmacy school from 1 to 4 p.m. and on the 23rd at the Student Union from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. For more information, you can visit the website at pharmacy.olemiss.edu. The Ole Miss Office of Sustainability has been hosting a food day festival since 2011 to celebrate healthy, local, and sustainably produced foods. Newswatch reporter Lauren Conley takes us out to eat. From fresh vegetables and hummus to food demonstrations and door prizes, the Ole Miss Food Day Festival had it all. Sustainability fellow Jay Chalkley says the festival is a way to promote local food options to students. It's important to showcase local produce because it gets a lot of students to come out to local markets as well as it gets them to support local sustainable food systems um, in and around Oxford. Local farmer and president of Harris Family Farm, Gladney Harris, recognizes the importance of events like this in educating people about sustainably grown products. Uh, I think it's unbelievably important for people to know where their food comes from because most of the time at a farmer's market 
the farmer that you're buying produce from is feeding it to his own family, so he's more um, aware of the practices that they're using. The Office of Sustainability has more events coming up throughout the month of October to create more awareness for local produce and environmental wellness. Mm. Lauren Conley, Newswatch, Ole Miss. The Sustainability Office will host a compost siftathon on October 31st. For a list of more events, visit their website at sustain.olemiss.edu. Locally owned businesses continue to overtake the city of Oxford. Students are constantly looking for new places to try, and the unique new meal replacement shake and energizing tea shop has definitely caught their attention. Annie Sharp is in studio to tell us more about Oxford SIP. Annie? Oxford continues to grow with new trendy places popping up all over town. The latest hotspot, Oxford SIP, opened up just a few weeks ago by a family from Jackson, Mississippi. The Cartwright family opened Oxford SIP on University Avenue, a meal replacement shake and loaded tea shop, just four weeks ago. Hey, we're eating like 1,500 calories before we even start our day, like we've got to change somewhere. And so we found this place in Jackson called Skinny's, and we got obsessed with it, and I couldn't come back to college without one, so I begged them to move up here and open one. Since opening, their tea and shakes have been all over social media. They're using word of mouth as their biggest form of marketing by offering deals when you post about them. We'll offer a deal if you buy the combo of a meal placement shake and a loaded energy tea, and you check in on social media, we give you $2 off. Grace works at the shop in between her classes and says she has loved getting to spend more time with her family through this adventure. Some of my favorite tea flavors are either Watermelon Jolly Rancher, Gummy Bear, Tranquility, or Spring Breaker. Those are really, really good ones. So this has been a way for us all to get back together. My mom will move here next year when my sister comes to Ole Miss, and they'll finally be back in their happy place in Oxford, Mississippi. And then, like, <laughs> Oxford SIP has not only been a way to bring the Cartwrights closer together, but the community of Oxford as well. Go check them out on social media or visit them off University Avenue. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Annie. Earlier today, Ole Miss journalism students arrived in the Florida Panhandle to cover the damages left behind from Hurricane Michael. They are talking to several Ole Miss students and alumni who are currently working on the recovery of putting Panama City Beach back together in one piece. Tune in tomorrow here on Newswatch for our in-depth coverage from Florida. Thanks, Annie. Coming up, we'll take a look at a survival story out of Arizona. And stay tuned to see which former member of the U.S. gymnastics team is in hot water. But first, Delia Vandeveld has your first look at the current conditions. Hey there, Oxford, and happy Thursday. We are continuing to see some cold temperatures and light winds. And coming in Saturday morning, we can expect some light showers. As we take a look at the current radar, you can see that it's clear in Oxford and across the rest of the state. Stay tuned later for my full report coming up on Stormwatch. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just going to drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> selfies nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. So, I'm kinda new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. A man was res rescued from a western Arizona mine shaft yesterday. 
Crews from the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office rescued 62-year-old John Waddell, who went 48 hours without food, water, and broke multiple bones. Waddell fell into the 100-foot deep shaft on Monday and once located was airlifted from the scene to be treated for non-life-threatening injuries. Waddell was alone when he fell into the shaft, but his friends became concerned and went to check on him when he didn't return Tuesday. A mountain rescue team took six hours to finally get him out of the shaft. Waddle is now in good condition recovering in the hospital. Former USA Gymnastics President Steve Penny was arrested and accused of removing documents linked to the Larry Nasser sexual abuse case. Penny was arrested almost three weeks after he was indicted by a grand jury for tampering with evidence. The documents would have helped law enforcement investigate the Nasser case. Authorities claim the documents were later delivered to Penny at the USAG headquarters in Indianapolis, Indiana. These documents are currently missing. The Nasser case has affected and involved many gymnasts. Police have identified a Texas woman who left her two-year-old son on a doorstep, but little did she know that it was all caught on camera. A woman at a home in Spring, Texas, reported that after loud banging on her door, she opened the door to the little boy standing there alone. Video from the resident shows the woman running up to the house holding the boy by his arm and then rings the doorbell and bangs on the door and then runs back towards the street. The father of the child explained that he received a text from the child's mother saying that a friend was going to drop him off at his house on Wednesday afternoon, but the child was dropped off at a neighbor's instead of his. Authorities are saying that the woman may face a felony child abandonment charge. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin announced his announced he will not participate in a high-profile investor conference discussing the killing of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. The conference will be held in Saudi Arabia next week. Mnuchin's recent decision of not attending reverses his original position. An administration official told CNN that no other government officials will attend next week Next week's summit in Mnuchin's place, President Trump has insisted that no other decision be made until other countries make their own announcements. The Powerball jackpot now stands at $430 million because there was no winner Wednesday. The Mega Millions jackpot rolled to an estimated $970 million for Friday's drawing, making it the largest jackpot in the game's history. The winning numbers for the Powerball are 3, 57, 64, 68, and 69. Powerball is 15 and Power Play is 3. This jackpot gives the winner a cash option of $248 million. If you combine the current Powerball and Mega Millions jackpots, there is $1.4 billion in lottery prize money to be won. The largest lottery jackpot was a $1.6 billion Powerball prize won in 2016. That is a lot of money, but Avery, I don't know about you, but I cannot, I'm loving this fall weather. Oh my goodness, me either, Sarah Kate, but will it last into the weekend? Delia Vandeveld will have her extended forecast coming up next on Stormwatch. Listen, you're my friend. I noticed you haven't really been yourself recently. Yeah, I feel like something's up. How are you? Are you okay? Is there anything you want to talk about? I just want to know how you're feeling. And listen, even if you don't know what to say, I'm here to talk. No matter what you're going through, I just want you to know I'm here. I've got your back. When you want to talk, I'm here. Did you put a new dent in that? This one? No. Were you texting and driving again? Yes. Hi, Leah. Hi, Dad. Sorry about your bumper. <laughs> <laughs> Disaster tips from the objects left behind. My home wasn't insured. 
but you can check your insurance policy now to make sure you're covered. Oh. My savings are lost, but you can put money aside and plan for unexpected disaster costs. We're lost forever, but you can scan important documents now so they survive. Oh. For more tips on how to prepare, visit ready.gov. Good evening, welcome back to Stormwatch. It is currently 64 degrees with sunny skies, some light winds moving at 5 to 10 miles per hour, and a 0% chance of rain. As we take a look at the current satellite image, you can see there are a few clouds to the west of Oxford, but really nothing in our area. Now taking a look at the temperatures across the map, everyone's sitting currently right around the mid-60s with Oxford and Corinth at 64, South Haven at 65, and Holly Springs and Tupelo at 66. As for the temperatures tomorrow, they will be a little bit warmer than today with a high of 73 in Oxford, 69 in South Haven, 71 in Holly Springs, and 76 in Tupelo. Now, as for tonight, we can expect temperatures to drop down to 46 degrees with some partly cloudy skies, light winds again, and no chance of rain. For tomorrow, we can expect a high around 72, partly cloudy skies, light and variable winds, and a small 20% chance of rain moving in tomorrow evening. Now, as we take a look at the five-day forecast, you can see that Saturday it is expected to rain Saturday morning, and then things should clear up and temperatures should warm moving into next week. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Delia. Up next, see what the Ole Miss soccer team has to do to win their final round game of the regular season. And see why some of the top high school basketball recruits may reconsider going to their top college choice. Don't ignore the subtext. It's on us to intervene in sexual assault. Because we can. Take the pledge at itsonus.org. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly Lights out. Good night. and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. think getting dumped by text is harsh try getting dumped by tennis ball my ex owner drove me out to the woods yelled fetch and by the time i bought the ball back he was gone yeah i was pissed but the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger i learned coping skills like taking it to the hole boom now i'm ready to fetch again but how about i throw and you run and get it Rebel fans, always great to have you. Jason Price with you for an awesome Thursday edition of Sports Watch. The Ole Miss women's soccer team is headed to Lexington, Kentucky tonight to take on the Wildcats in the Rebels' last away game of the regular season. Tonight is a must-win for Coach Mott and the Rebs as they are inching closer to a berth in the SEC tournament. But I wouldn't worry too much as Rebel forward CC Kaiser has four more goals than Kentucky's top two scorers combined. Kaiser is currently sitting at 12 goals and 30 points 
putting her at first in the SEC for both categories. If you get the SEC Network on your television, make sure to watch Kaiser and the Rebels when they kick off at 6.30. Lafayette High School tennis coach Debbie Swindle was named Mississippi Tennis Professional of the Year after helping the Commodores win their first state title in school history. Along with being the coach for Lafayette, Swindle also teaches classes in Oxford through the Oxford Park Commission. Swindle was also named the 2018 Women's Tennis Coach for Mississippi and is eligible to be considered for the Sectional Tennis Professional of the Year. Swindle and the Commodores will try to defend their title when the season starts in March. If you're one of those people that believe college players should be getting paid, then you might like the new contracts the NBA G League is making available for high school players. The G League can now offer $125,000 contracts to graduating high school players that would prefer to begin their career in the G League rather than the one and done route created in 2006. The players can hire their own agents and pursue marketing deals from sneaker companies. Commission Chair Condoleezza Rice expressed that talented athletes shouldn't be forced to attend college and miss out on a year of paychecks. And finally, in the NLCS, the Dodgers take the 3-2 series lead after Clayton Kershaw popped off yesterday to give, the L to give LA the 5-2 win. In seven innings, Kershaw allowed one run and sat down nine batters. Justin Turner was also a big reason for the LA win, going two for three with one being an RBI double. The Dodgers will look, out, will look to close out the series against the Milwaukee Brewers on Saturday in Milwaukee. In the ALCS, the Boston Red Sox have taken a 3-1 series lead after Andrew Benatendi and Jackie Bradley Jr. secured the 8-6 win last night. It was pretty back and forth until the sixth inning when Jackie Bradley Jr. slapped a two-round homer to put the Sox up 6-5. After that, Houston was just trying to keep up, but Boston would make sure that would fall, that attempt would fall just short thanks to a game diving win, game winning dive from Adam Benatendi. Now Boston is just one win away from heading to the World Series. Well, that's all for sports. But if you still want more, give us a follow on Twitter at Newswatch underscore UM for more of your favorite sports updates. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Jason. Coming up, see how one high school student turned a competition into a heartfelt story. Be prepared to have tissues by your side because this next one is sure to be a tear jerker. Here is my handle and here is my spell. When I get all steamed up, then I shout. Tip, Tip me over, over and pour me, me out. out. Oh. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Cheers. Take time to be a dad today. We are Ole Miss Rebels. As Mississippi's flagship university, we dig deeper, see farther, work harder. We pioneered human organ transplants. We helped prove Einstein's theory of gravitational waves. We are distinguished as a Carnegie R1 top 2.5% research institution. We are Ole Miss, transforming lives and the world. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. <sighs> but now, I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome. We need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Remember that to love America is to love all Americans. Because love has no labels. A heartwarming photo that went viral is earning high praise for a high school sophomore in New York State. Jake Tobin is a sophomore at Cas Casanova High School and a runner on the cross country team. And now, some are calling him a hero. It was just last weekend that Jake was running in an invitational in Auburn when he noticed a Fairport runner, Luke Fortner, who is visually impaired, fall just a few feet from the finish line. 
He helped his competitor up the hill and has received a lot of attention for his act of kindness. That's all we have for tonight. Thank you for tuning in to Newswatch Ole Miss. I'm Sarah Kate Caliguire. Be sure to join us here again tomorrow night at 5 and on NewsWatchOleMiss.com. I'm Avery Sadler. Thank you and good night.